I'm here with Neil Jacques. 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 No S. It's a silent S. Oui, oui. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Good stuff. What do you do? You DJ? Uh, basically, I'm a DJ and I'm a promotions manager. I work for Harewood Entertainment, who run and own Viper Rooms, formerly Ministry of Sound, uh, Moco, Harrogate and the King's Club. We do have other clubs in and around the country and our owner actually runs Next and Leisure which own the syndicates and the sins around the country as well. We're about to roll out nationally in the next about 8 to, eight to 12 months throughout the UK. There's been a recession on. People have been hit hard. How have the clubs dealt with the recession? Um, it's been quite a tough time, especially for the last 12 months, and I envisage it being quite tough for about the next six months as well. For us, it's been about putting extra content into the nights, and that's where we've seen an upturn in business. So let's talk about you being a DJ. Where do you DJ? Uh, currently, at the moment, uh, I'm, I'm only DJ in Harrogate, and again, this goes back to my commitments in Harrogate. I've had former residences in Leeds and throughout the north of England for the likes of Head Candy, Kiss to Funk, Funky Dory, Habit. I've played uh, across Europe in Barcelona, Milan, uh, played in Dubai a couple of times before and I am back in Dubai this year and I've, it's taken me a long time getting there but I've actually got eight gigs in Ibiza this year. What sort of tunes do you play? If I'm playing in Leeds I tend to play a much more underground set. In Harrogate however it is a very commercial town, it's generally a young crowd that are out in Harrogate. With the best will in the world you could try and educate them as much as you like but they're simply not going to go for it. You're almost like um, a human iPod or a human jukebox for the night. When you first started DJing, what sort of influences were you looking to and what influences do you look to now? When I first started DJing, again, it, was, it spawned from like uh, our clubbing days and it was very much influenced by Back to Basics, Ralph Lawson, Huggy at the, at the time then and as it progressed onwards it was Tristan Acuna, Paul Wolford before he left Basics. We used to go to the music factory as well and I got, a lot in, uh, got into a lot of the American jocks that were over there, Kenny Dope, Louis Vega, uh, Sandy Rivera and, and, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not influenced as much by iconic figures as such, more by the kind of up and coming kind of young producers, yeah. the likes of Luke Pompey, who's got a lot of stuff coming out on CR2 at the moment. We've had him over in, at MoCo in the last two weeks and he absolutely smashed the place to smithereens. Completely fresh sound for Harrogate. He's the only jock of late that I've seen use four CDJs and use everything on each CDJ as well. I think all those old guys have to play a bit of catch up actually, to be fair. And, and we are doing, but the new guys, as, as an erudite friend told me earlier, um, <laughs> are so all fair with this that they've always had it at their fingertips right from the start. What was the first record you ever bought? I think the first record I ever purchased was when Stardust Music Sounds Better With You originally came out and there was only seven copies landed in Leeds and I've got a friend of mine who works at Crash Records in Leeds and I actually had him put one to one side so I got one of the only seven copies that landed in Leeds. So was that around the time you were DJing or was it earlier? I, I just, I think I just started DJing around that time. So were you just playing this record over and over because you've record, just got it? I need a couple of copies really for that, but however, it was a staple in my set actually. So A few, a a few times a night maybe? No. Was it the never, side never of more, the never 90s? Never more than once a night. Never more than once a night. How do you think that the, the scene has changed over the years? Has it got more commercial? And I've been at nights where they played Riverside and stuff about five times a night. What, what do you think of that? I think at the moment it's very commercial and that's to do with the economic climate and it's to do with keeping as many bodies in your particular venue as possible. The smoking ban has had a huge effect on venues. Instead of you having a captive audience for X amount of time, yeah. it's a transient audience. They're forever flitting between the dance floor and going outside. You could be doing cartwheels behind the deck and they're still going to go outside for a cigarette. You can be playing the set of your life and they're still going to go outside. That coupled with the recession that we're in at the moment has really hit, hit venues hard and they've had to tweak and alter their music policies to suit. It is very commercial at the moment. Uh, I just think you've got to find a different way of playing a commercial set or having a commercial night and that's where your jocks come in actually and they've got to be a little bit more original about what they're doing and that's where re-editing, remixing your own tracks comes into play and making everything a little bit more original and different. I want you to shut your eyes 
Imagine. You're not going to write out on me, Ralph. I've got me no, I, me. I've got no pens. <laughs> All right, okay. Can I hold that? All right. Shut your eyes. Shut your eyes. No, it's all. We'll stay quite far apart. Shut your eyes. Right, imagine that you are on a desert island. Okay. Stuck there. Is this desert island disc for the fuck? Sir, yes it is. Yeah, all right. I haven't seen the I haven't seen the list even at all. Right. Build with this. You know, go with this. Go with this. I'll try. Right. So pretend that you are stuck on this desert island for eternity, which magically has electricity and. A stereo which works. Okay. What five discs do you bring? Uh, it could be albums. There's a, that, there's a few that originally kind of spring to mind. A guy called Gerald Voodoo Ray. Uh, Massive Attack, Unfinished Sympathy. Excellent, yes, um, yes. Joe Smooth, Promised Land. Kings of Tomorrow, finally. I'd probably go for a, a Groove Armada album, but I'm unsure which actually, to be honest. An album, just pick one at random. It's good to see you, such a big Super fan. Super Styling. Yes. Super Styling. That is a great track, album. Actually. Never mind the album, Super Styling the track. Just, actually. Yeah. Just like you've got all these beautiful albums and then just super it's styling. It's a raw deal, five tracks for the rest of time. <laughs> <laughs> it could be Stardust.